elites should pull their weight in pushing for a better Uganda, Hillary Taylor Sagaya Sunday January 7, 2024. U.S.-based activist Hillary Taylor Sagaya by Gabriel Bull. Reporter Daily Monitor What You Need to Know. For years, U.S.-based activist Hillary Taylor Sagaya has presented himself as a compassionate disruptor and human rights activist, known for his relentless pursuit of justice, liberty, equality, and freedom globally. He spoke to Sunday Monitor's Gabriel Bull about activism. Underscore what is the inspiration behind your love for Ugandan politics? Underscore having traveled across four continents, my heart remains firmly in Uganda, my only true home. My experiences in the U.S. have deeply influenced me, particularly witnessing the strong sense of patriotism and commitment to the greater good. The American exceptionalism, and spirit of putting country before self, coupled with my humble beginnings, ignites a desire within me to be proactive for the sake of future generations in Uganda. I don't want to be remembered for inaction, especially when our constitution empowers us to hold leaders accountable and resist tyranny. But the entire inspiration for Ugandan politics emanates from my O-level political education class at St. Maria Goretti Katende. Related. Prime the anti-climax of General Kayahora's 4-0-Y-E-A-R walk with Museveni people in power July 9. Prime in memory of Topher Twesigye, the diplomat with politically incorrect identity. Mulera August 15. There, I gained a profound understanding of Uganda's complex political history. This knowledge continually fuels my commitment to contribute towards rectifying the challenges in our political system, drawing inspiration from the best democratic practices I have observed abroad. Underscore how did you end up being in the diaspora? Underscore it is because of a combination of push and pull factors. In Uganda, the current regime has created a very high human rights temperature and climate. Today, we are seeing an erosion of free speech, replaced by a pervasive fear of speaking out. The country is grappling with serious issues like extrajudicial killings, torture, and arbitrary arrests, often without due process. On the flip side, globalization has been a pull factor. It has erased traditional borders, interlinking countries and simplifying the movement of both goods and people. This global interconnectedness has been a significant factor in shaping my journey. Underscore how do you rate the performance of politicians aligned to the opposition politics in Uganda but we often seen you fight opposition in Uganda. Underscore. I hate politics of deception, hypocrisy, and quid pro quo. Opposition leaders in Uganda are not above criticism. I strongly believe in holding all leaders accountable, as envisioned by the framers of our constitution, to uphold our constitutional duties. All opposition politicians I have called out mainly on X are either cherry-picking human rights or they are engaged in transactional politics. As a human rights activist, I find it contradictory, inexcusable, and indefensible when opposition leaders support repressive laws while decrying the regime's oppression. For instance, all opposition MPs voted for the anti-homosexuality law based on emotions and misinformation, ironically becoming victims of the very trap set by President Museveni. They now claim that this law, which they supported, targets them, which is a paradox. I have always urged politicians, especially those from the opposition, to prioritize human rights and reject such bills, but often they're unwilling to risk their political positions. This lack of commitment to collective liberty is disappointing, given that inclusiveness is a core value of opposition parties. I am driven by the belief that hate has no place in Uganda's politics, and it's crucial to challenge any form of political hypocrisy for the betterment of our nation. Therefore, opposition leaders should either stand for human rights for all people or stand for hypocrisy. Underscore critics say you have a personal vendetta against Matthias MPUUGA. How do you respond to that accusation? Underscore I have no personal vendetta against Matthias Mpuga as many of my trolls claim on X it is appalling that some Ugandans mainly on the opposition think some politicians are not supposed to be questioned. Maybe my crime is calling out Mpuga because he failed to do his job as the leader of the opposition. Many times, he was working as a hired gun of the regime while misguiding the opposition. Because of his transactional politics, deception, and speculation, to me, Mpuga is the greatest letdown in the history of LOP. His inaction showed him as weak to be the leader of the opposition and here are some of the reasons that compelled me to say enough is enough with him. 
As Lop, the leader of opposition in parliament, Mpuga failed to initiate impeachment proceedings against Anita Mung, Speaker of Parliament on three grounds of contempt of parliament, obstruction of justice, and abuse of power. Yet Among acknowledged taking and paying back the 500 iron sheets of the vulnerable people of Karamoha. The Speaker stealing iron sheets was worse than the Watergate scandal, which led to the impeachment of U.S. President Richard Nixon in 1972. Mpuga's lack of response to the gravity of this situation was, to me, indicative of ineffective leadership Mpuga misled the opposition MPs and let them vote for the draconian anti-homosexuality law yet they had two other options of either voting against the law or abstaining. When are politicians going to stop using the LGBTQ plus Ugandans as a scapegoat, their punching bag, and for their own political and trade gains? As a celebrated lawyer, Mpuga failed to put human rights first and emotionally decided to vote for a bill that legalized homophobia in Uganda. As an activist, I had to challenge him for saying General Museveni is an oppressor forgetting that he also voted for a repressive bill that is now an enacted law. On addition, Mpuga was too quick to blame MP Zaki Francis for causing a scene during plenary, while demanding for the release of political prisoners. Zaki was sent to the disciplinary committee and later censured as Commissioner of Parliament but I don't recall seeing Mpuga defending him or MP Kabago. As LOP, Mpuga's leadership was missing to defend his fellow party members and opposition MPs. This showed Mpuga's height of hypocrisy. Similarly, Mpuga failed to unite the opposition MPs, he never got a consensus on anything from all opposition MPs, he was not strategic, and lacked consistency in his leadership. Hillary Taylor Sagaya demonstrates in the U.S. against human rights abuse in Uganda. Photo, file. I could not be muzzled about Mpuga's weak leadership and that is why I, I confronted him in Washington, D.C., at a town hall meeting we had in the Martin Luther King, MLK, Jr. Memorial Library. I could not allow Mpuga to lecture us on human rights in MLK's library in D.C., he was insulting the legacy of MLK. Underscore you often rally opposition politicians to fight for human rights in Uganda especially the LGBT rights, why are LGBT rights a concern to you? Underscore. For over a decade, advocating for human rights has been a core part of my life. My dedication stems from training by organizations like the Commonwealth Secretariat, Human Rights Division and the World Federation of United Nations Associations, which provided me with a comprehensive understanding of human rights. I emphasize LGBT plus rights because they are often neglected, especially with the state-sponsored homophobia in Uganda. As a libertarian and human rights defender, I have to remind opposition politicians that all humans are born free and equal, and this includes LGBTIQ plus individuals. Underscore if you believe in human rights, why do you get concerned when others exercise their freedom of expression by saying that they don't want a Uganda with people of a particular gender identity? Underscore the issue is not about curbing freedom of expression, but rather addressing the damaging impact of homophobic rhetoric, often propagated by influential leaders. Underscore what can be done to change the status quo in Uganda. Underscore to transform Uganda's current state, a multifaceted approach is required. Key to this change is the involvement of the elites in the grassroots movement, folding sleeves and stepping out of their comfort zones to join hands in the struggle. Uganda with its vast potential and resources, is capable of accommodating everyone's aspirations, but a mindset shift is needed. A crucial step is implementing disruption through civic education and resilient disobedience. These strategies can challenge and eventually dismantle the entrenched systems perpetuating the status quo. Underscore would you advise a Ugandan youth to leave the country? Underscore deciding whether to leave Uganda is a deeply personal choice for any youth, influenced by their unique challenges and aspirations. It's important to recognize that life in the diaspora comes with its own set of challenges and success overseas is not guaranteed, contrary to popular belief. Underscore you spend a lot of time on social media talking about politics and human rights. On a lighter note what gives you peace and what gives you happiness underscore. In today's world, where polarization is prevalent and social media serves as a pivotal platform for information dissemination, the digital landscape is a battleground of democracy, misinformation, and varying ideologies. Amidst this, what brings me peace as a libertarian is witnessing justice, freedom, and equality triumph. 
My happiness is derived from simple acts of spreading love and bringing smiles to those in need which fills me with immense satisfaction. Additionally, my passion for soccer is a significant source of joy. I am a diehard fan of Onduparaka FC and Chelsea FC. Monitor. Empower Uganda.